Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to transcribe Zoom recordings using the Zoom API. The Zoom API affords you programmatic access to all of your account information, including your recordings. So in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a server-to-server -server OAuth application that can securely transcribe your cloud recordings. And we'll also show how to transcribe local recordings as well. In this tutorial, we'll be making use of this list recordings endpoint in the Zoom API. And using this endpoint requires a pro or higher plan. So make sure to go to Zoom and sign up for a pro plan or higher if you want to follow along. And you'll need an assembly AI account to transcribe the files. So go ahead and sign up if you haven't done so already. When you want to create a program that uses the Zoom API, you do so by making a so-called Zoom app. Zoom apps allow you to create various applications that afford different levels of access to your account information using OAuth, which is a modern standard for providing limited access to your account. So the first thing we need to do is create a Zoom app so that we can use the Zoom API in our application. So once you're signed into your Zoom account, you're going to want to go to the Zoom app marketplace and go to develop, build server to server app. And you can go ahead and name the application transcription app. You'll be met with this screen that displays your app's credentials. These are used to identify your account, as well as the server that the application will be running on, which in this case is your computer. Create a file in your project directory called .env, and then paste each of these values in with an appropriate environment variable name. So we have Zoom account ID, Zoom client ID, and Zoom client secret. And you can go ahead and just copy and paste each of those values from this screen. Now we need to add an assembly AI key to our environment file. So go to your assembly AI dashboard and click copy API key, and then go back to your .env file and add a new line for the assembly AI API key. Then you can hit continue. You can fill in whatever information you want to, but to activate the application, you only need to fill in the company name and the developer contact information. Scopes allow for fine grained control over what a given application is allowed to do with your account. Using scopes has a litany of benefits and they're central to the OAuth standard. So for our application, we're going to need two scopes. We're going to need under recording, view all user recordings. We're going to need return all the meetings recordings, which is cloud recording, read, list recording files, admin. And then we're going to need list all cloud recordings for a user, uh, which is cloud recording, read, list user recordings, admin. So go ahead and save that and then hit continue and now your application is ready for activation. So go ahead and activate your app, and now we can move on to writing our code. Now we can install the packages we'll need to write our application. So go to the terminal and pip install assembly AI requests and python.env. Once the packages are installed, create a file called zoom.py. So before writing our main application code, we're going to write a class called Zoom Client that will help us interact with the Zoom API in our main application code. So first we're going to import requests so that we can make HTTP requests to the Zoom API. And then we're going to define our class Zoom Client. And first we'll define the initialization function. And this function is going to take in our account ID, our client ID, and our client secret. So these are the application credentials that we saved to our .m file earlier. First, we'll just save each of these values into an instance attribute, and then we're going to add one more attribute called access token. And the value of this variable will be the result of self.getAccessToken, which we'll define next. An access token is required for authorization of requests to the Zoom API from a server-to-server -server OAuth application. While client credentials are permanent, access tokens are ephemeral and used only for authorizing requests when the application is in use. So define this function get access token, and we'll make a post request to the relevant Zoom endpoint in order to get an access token. And we'll save the response as the response variable, and then we'll return the access token from the responses JSON. And in order to get this access token, we're going to need to pass in our credentials. So create a dictionary called data and pass in account ID, client ID, and client secret using the instance attributes that we defined above. And then we need to add a grant type of account credentials and pass this uh, data dictionary into our post request. Note that these access tokens expire in one hour. Our application should be able to run in that time, but if you have many, 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 many transcripts and the application is gonna take longer than an hour to execute, then you should be aware of this limitation. In this case, you'll need to refresh the token, which you can do by simply instantiating a new Zoom client or writing a method to refresh the access token. 
Now we can define an endpoint to get our recordings. So add a function, get recordings. And this is the URL that we'll use for this request. So we'll make a get request to this URL and return it. And the last thing we need to do is add authorization to this request by passing in our access token that we just wrote the method for. So in this case, we just need a headers dictionary, which specifies the authorization as a bearer token. And we pass in the self.access token attribute. And then we can add this to our get request. And finally, we're gonna return the JSON from this response rather than returning the response itself. Among the information inside this JSON are the meeting IDs of the meetings that are returned. These IDs are unique identifiers that can be used to reference these meetings, and we'll use these IDs to get the recordings associated with each meeting. In particular, we're gonna to need to create a method that takes in a meeting ID and fetches the information about its recordings from the Zoom API, once again using our access token. Each meeting has several types of recordings. Some of them have video and audio, and some of them just have audio. So we can extract the download URL for the recording that has audio only, and then we can use it to dynamically construct a link that contains both our access token as well as the password that's required to view that recording. In this way, we're generating a publicly accessible URL for the file that Assembly AI can use to fetch the meeting when it's generating its transcript. And this prevents us from having to download the recording to our computer and then upload it to Assembly AI, so it just saves us some time. So create a new function called getDownloadURL, and that's going to take in a meeting ID. Once again, we'll use a headers dictionary like above, so we'll pass in our access token, and the URL in this case will be an f-string that contains the meeting ID. And we'll again make a get request to this URL, passing in our headers, and then extract the JSON in this uh, R variable. So this JSON is going to contain a lot of different types of recordings, so we're going to use a list comprehension to extract the recording that we want. So we'll say that the URL is equal to uh, I download URL for I in R recording files. So the response is JSON is going to have a lot of information about our meeting and we're relegating our purview to the recording files, and then we're extracting the download URLs for each of those recording files. And we're gonna filter the URLs uh, for the ones that are audio only. So if uh, the particular recording's recording type is audio only, and then we'll extract what should be the first and only element from that list. And now we're ready to dynamically construct our publicly accessible URL. So we, define this f string here, which is the URL we just extracted, and then some URL parameters that include the access token and the playback access token. So this is the meeting password. And we extract that from the password of the responses JSON. And finally, we just return the download link. So now that our Zoom client is fully defined, we can move on to actually using it in our main transcription application. So create a new file called main.py, and now we can get started with our imports. Uh, so first we'll import OS from the standard library, then we'll import assembly AI as AAI. From .env we will import load.env, and then from our Zoom module we will import the Zoom client that we wrote. And then finally we will uh, execute the load.env function which will load our environment variables from our .env file. And now we can go ahead and create a constant for each of our Zoom credentials which we will use uh, as the defaults when we're instantiating our Zoom client. And then we can explicitly set our AAI API key uh, using the assembly AI API key environment variable. Moving on, we can instantiate a transcriber, which is going to be an AAI.transcriber object. Then we instantiate a Zoom client, passing in our credentials. Now we're going to fetch all of our recordings and then get the download URL of the first one. So this is just for simplicity here, but feel free to add some logic if you want to transcribe all of your files or some select specific files. And if you're planning on transcribing all of your files, then you can check out our video on batch transcription to see how you can do this more quickly using webhooks. So first we'll get our recordings with client.getRecordings. And if we have any meetings, then we're going to get the recording ID of the first meeting. Then we're going to get our download URL by using the get download URL method of our client, passing in the recording ID. And then we create our transcript by using our transcribers transcribe method uh, and passing in this URL. 
and that's all we have to do. So we can go ahead and print off the transcript text and then save the transcripts text into a file called transcript.txt. And uh, otherwise, if we don't have any meetings, then we can just display a message that says no meetings to transcribe. And now we can run our application. So go to the terminal and enter python main.py. And in this case, and it looks like this key actually doesn't exist if we don't have any recordings. So we just have to change this into a try except block here. Uh, and we should make this exception handling better because it's just catching all exceptions now. But uh, for now, we can just go ahead and run it. And we see there's no meetings to transcribe on this account. So now let's go create one. So I'm going to go ahead and start a meeting. And I can see my voice being picked up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and record this meeting, record to the cloud. And testing, testing, one, two, three. Uh, when I end this meeting and rerun the program, then we'll be able to see my words in the terminal. And now back in our application, if we run the code again, we'll be able to see the transcript from the meeting that we just recorded. So go ahead and run python main.py. And after a few seconds, we'll see the transcript printed to the terminal. And there it is. So we see once we go back to the program, we'll be able to see these words transcribed to the terminal. So let me go ahead and stop the recording. So that's how you can transcribe cloud recordings and transcribing local files is even easier. So this is all you need to do to transcribe a local file. Uh, you can import assembly AI as AAI, set your API key, instantiate a transcriber, and then transcribe using the path to the local file and then print out the transcript text. So that's all you have to do for local recordings. And all the transcriptions we did here today use assembly AI's new universal one model. And you can go to the research section of our website if you wanna read more about universal one uh, and check out some of the benchmarks. Or you can check out Mr.'s latest video if you want to learn more about how you can use Universal One in Python. All right, I'll see you in the next video. So first of all, how can you use Universal One Assembly AI's latest model? Well, fortunately, Assembly AI's API by default uses Universal One's best tier. So when you're calling the transcribe function on the transcriber, you are automatically choosing to use the best version, the best model Assembly AI has to offer.